celebrating Egypt's National Day in lockdown, 23 July 2020. consultant and today I will be sharing with you about a special day that's happening today and it's the Egyptian National Day on the 23 of July. I'm up here in Melbourne in quarantine and in lockdown for the second um, time and uh, we usually spend the, the Egyptian National Day with the consulate. There usually, there's usually a party every year whether it was in Canberra and the Egyptian Embassy or in the, in the consulate here in Melbourne. But instead, uh, we are at home. So I thought I'd share with you a bit of background about Egyptian culture as a celebration of this amazing country that I used to live in for 13 years. So if you don't know a lot about my story, I'm an Egyptian skilled migrant. I've been in Australia for the past 17 years almost. I moved here in 2003 and uh, lived for 15 years of those 17 years in Canberra, started an events business, and now I'm also a lifestyle design coach, a lifestyle design consultant, and I help people who are going through a transition in life. Um, but today's story is about some of my adventures in Egypt. Um, you'll see here behind me, I finally put this up. This is actually an artwork by the artist is called Murad so it's made on papyrus paper and it's actually the dark papyrus paper and with that they basically actually leave it in water for longer to become dark. I picked this up in uh, Luxor in one of my recent visits to Egypt in 2018 and I mean we went into a papyrus shop and there were so many artworks to choose from but this especially caught my eye because living in Australia it felt like I needed a reminder of my heritage so you can see here a bit of what Egypt is all about this does come back to the pharaonic times so you'll find Kairos up here this is Sinai where there's Mount Sinai and the St. Catherine Cathedral Sharm el Sheikh is a huge spot for tourists, uh, for, for scuba diving, as well as Hurghada on the Red Sea. I visited all these places. Uh, I was born in the small city of Port Said, which is somewhere around here. It's uh, near the Suez Canal. And uh, then lived in Kuwait City for 13 years of my childhood before moving back to Egypt during the Gulf War. And so the, actually I lived in Kuwait 12 years, 13 years in Egypt, and then I was a teen. And when I lived there, I found out a lot about my culture, but I was much younger and didn't really experience a lot of Egypt like I did after I moved back to, Aust after I moved to Australia when I was 25. Anyway, so today is all about celebrating Egypt. Egypt is a fabulous country if you've never been and if you are intending to go, uh, you will not regret it. I do not work in the tourism sphere, but I definitely hold Egypt as in part of my heart and today is the national day. So I thought I'd share a bit, of, a bit as well about uh, the pharaohs who are my ancestors. Um, when I went to Luxor, and Luxor is actually down here, I managed to go into the temple the Karnak Temple, which is an amazing place where, and it's known for its spirituality. Um, I'm not an Egyptologist, but for me to explain the feeling I felt over there, you'd actually need to go there. It's just pretty, pretty amazing. This is where I picked this up and also picked this up. So what this is, is my name. You can see a difference in the actual uh, papyrus used here to here. So this papyrus here is much lighter and that is because it's been in water for less days than this papyrus. So this, you could tell, you could say that this papyrus is more ancient than this. Um, and this is actually all the letters of my name in hieroglyphic, whatever you call it, Egyptian. 
and uh, this is actually a circle of life and you can see a lot of what they used to do back then so that's one of the things i wanted to share with you and oh, i don't drop it but i'm not really happy okay i'm just gonna remove this now and this guy here is one of the pharaohs don't ask me his name because i would not know and so is she so this is basically what they used to dress in back then um this necklace is a tribute well, if you can see it it's a tribute to egyptian culture i mean it's not as as beautiful as this because this is an accessory however you can tell that we like in egypt they love this circular collar and this top that i'm wearing today is actually an australian designer camilla which I absolutely love because she takes you around the world in her designs. And this design is part of a line she made a few months ago or last season, I'm not sure. I just waited until it went on sale to get it. But yeah, this one especially has, you can see the cats on it. Anyway, this is what I thought I'd do the video with today because it's all about being in theme when you are talking about a particular, a particular um, subject. And this guy here is actually, who is he? He's the Sphinx. I know he's the Sphinx. I was just uh, trying to test my cameraman here. This is the Sphinx. I actually found him and he's very heavy compared to these young people because uh, they're made out of, I don't know what they're made out of. It's not real ceramic or stone like this. Uh, this is actually an op shop buy that I found during my last trip to Canberra. I was really surprised to find this guy sitting there and he looked at me in the eye and I looked him back and we shared a moment so he had to come back with me to Melbourne. Anyway, if you haven't seen the Sphinx, he's much bigger uh, in real life. He's got the head, actually sorry, the body of a lion I believe and the heads of a pharaoh. And why Egyptians loved him is because that represents strength. You can Google this. And lastly, well actually not lastly, lastly before I go into some uh, comments about, not comments, um, Amsel Shabaya, which is uh, quotes, quotes, Egyptian quotes. I will share some Egyptian quotes, but I will first share this guy too. Uh, he is actually the scarab or the good luck beetle. And I'll read what it says here. It says that in ancient Egypt, the scarab beetle was considered as the symbol of the sun god Ra and, res and resurrection of eternal life. Scarab amulets were very popular. Pharaohs used them as a symbol of new life and, new and good luck. I think we all need a scarab in our life these days with all the changes that are happening around. Um, this is also a purchase from Egypt and uh, he's, he lives on my desk here. I absolutely love him. So moving on from the pharaohs, which was part of Egyptian culture, but it's not all of Egyptian culture. I thought I'd share with you some Egyptian quotes or Amsel Shaabeya. Uh, Egyptian Arabic is a form of Arabic that is very uh, popular in the Middle East because Egyptian, well, there's 100 million Egyptians in Egypt and uh, for that part of the world that's a lot of people that speak the same language it's uh the language is actually extracted from uh, the arabic in the quran or the classical arabic yet it is a more simplified version of that arabic and there are some words influenced by french um, and english and yeah, like in Egypt, people say piscine, which is French for pool. And they say, um, oh, this is the only thing that's coming up to mind, kulak, kilot, and that's what these days in fashion is actually a long pant, but in Egyptian it's actually uh, underwear. Anyway, I don't know why that came up, but hey, um, let's go to telling you some of those quotes that I was mentioning before. It's called a roving eye, and I love how it says it's head to toe in Egyptian Arabic expressions. So, um, cameraman will zoom in. This is my first quote, and it says, Wish Shek wa Wish Amar. And that translates 
translate to is it your face or the face of the moon and that that really doesn't make much sense in English but if you translate when you translate it word for word however it does mean long time no see <laughs> here's one of them next we'll do this guy he's uh, in Arabic it says he fights the flies around his face that's the um, translation word for word however that doesn't make much sense and uh, the real meaning is he'll pick a fight with anyone it looks like someone that would pick a fight but not really with anyone but hey next one is <laughs> Her face is good on me. That's the word for word translation. And obviously that doesn't really make much sense. Um, the real meaning is she brings me good luck. Very friendly face is a common, common face you'll find around Egypt. Now I think I'll do three more. This one is Mean which is word for word, who took your mind? What really stands for? And this girl looks like she's up in the... We'll go to this lady who's also a very, very Egyptian look you'll find on the streets of Egypt. And this quote says, um, which word for word means her eye is full. And that doesn't really make much sense, but it really means she's content. <laughs> and the last one that I wanted to share is this guy here. It says, <laughs> Which is word for word means he, he sticks his nose into everything. That is a very Egyptian trait. Uh, that doesn't mean much, but really what it means is he, he is nosy. And don't we know a lot of nosy people in our life. Anyway, this is it from me. There's many, many more quotes. So if you'd like me to keep sharing, maybe that's, that's for another time. I just wanted to wish everyone, whether you're in Egypt, whether you're in Australia, in Canada, you're Egyptians living in the UK, I have no idea where the Egyptians are. And if you're non-Egyptian as well, uh, today is the Egyptian National Day. I play the National Anthem, but I didn't set it up to play the National Anthem. So I'll just leave you with this. We are all the same, but different. Thank you so much for watching. Leave me comments and have a fabulous National Day wherever you are in the world. Uh, Bye for now.